But you know, she don't need an introduction. Yeah! 
There's a, a stillness. Thank God for um, the opportunity to stand before you guys today. I am indeed honored. Um, God has been teaching me more and more about honor and how as much as the teacher is given to the church, the church is given to the teacher, amen. And so I honor you all and I am grateful um, to have the opportunity to stand before you because what that shows me is God trusts me with you all. Amen. Amen. And so I give honor, of course, to my pastors or my my apostles um, who have uh, poured into me like none other, who um, I can definitely say I am a mixture of, I don't lean one way or the other. What you saw before, and I was Pastor Frankie, and then what you'll see towards the end, you'll see Apostle Cynthia. She'll come on out, okay? And I thank God for my natural parents because it's just as much as I am your children in the spirit. I am definitely your children in the natural. And it's, it's funny that I am a mix of them also. The first part you see my mom, because she's the worshiper, but of course in the teaching, you, you'll hear my father come forth, amen. So I thank God for all four of them because all four of them have definitely. Um, created me and, and helped to mold me into who I am today, amen. amen. So I take it, I don't take it lightly who I am, and I don't take it lightly um, who God has given me as parents. I am so honored to be their offspring, amen. amen. I was talking to Apostle, I said, I may not, you know, you never catch up with your teacher, but I'm just happy to say I'm her child. Amen. I'm just happy to say that I am the child of my parents. Amen. Um, if I could go to heaven and say, you know, Apostle, you know, I, I'm hers. Or, you know, Dwayne, yeah, I, I'm his. And so that, that's my bragging right. Say amen. <laughs> so I give honor to you all because uh, I am grateful. And um, of course, my. Um, my sidekick, Prophetess Kendra, the one who pushes me and provokes me to be greater every day. Amen. And my praise team, I love y'all. I love y'all. And of course, everybody, like I said, I honor you all because um, in some way or other, uh, you have helped me grow. And I thank God for that. Amen. So today, I'm going to time myself. As it says that after 20 minutes, people ain't paying attention no more. So, I'll give y'all as much as I can in about 20. If I could stretch y'all in the spirit to 25, that'd be real good. Amen? Amen. 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 So, um, in, 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 in asking God about what it is he will want me to say today, he started off in an area, because this is definitely a season where God is pushing us to higher heights. Um, it's a season where he is um, about to really release some things, but what he was telling me is that he's, he's, he's getting the hearts of the people ready. Because for this thing that's coming, the heart has to be right. And he brought me back to last year when he was working on the mind of the people. He said, now I'm working on the heart because for this thing that's about to come, they have to be steadfast in their heart. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. So he started me off in one area, and the way God deals with me when preparing me, he always starts me in one place, and I always end up another. So I knew that wasn't where I was going to stay, but I thank God for what he has given me, because it's an awesome, awesome word, and I was blessed by it, and I hope you are too, okay? Yes. So today you're going to learn a whole lot about eagles that you probably don't care to know, but 
Uh, Deuteronomy 32, 9 and 12. Let's start there. Be that's the verse or the, 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 uh, the scripture that kind of turned my mind towards this ego-like mindset or this ego-like process um, of going from nest to air or nest to flight. Amen. And so that's what we're going to talk about, the process of going from nest to flight and how important it is not to get stuck in the nest because you were truly made for the sky. Amen. Amen. And so if I had to title it for the sake of our cameraman, um, it because <laughs> he looked, I don't know. Um, let me go back and see the title he gave me. Uh, it's time to fly. The nest is not your home. Amen. 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 So, I'm going to quickly describe, uh, Prophet Kendra, read uh, Deuteronomy 32, 9 through 12, just so you'll understand the basis of where I kind of came from with this whole thing. Okay. Deuteronomy 32, 9 through 12. Okay. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. So he found him in the desert, in the wilderness. Kind of like where a lot of us started. Amen? Amen. Okay. Okay. He led him about, he instructed him, he kept him as the apple of his eye. So he, he leads you, instructs you, that's kind of the first part of the process of this thing we call life. He kind of leads us and he's right there. And he's, he's guiding us. He's very close in the beginning. Amen? Amen. As an eagle stirreth stir up her nest, fluttereth her over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, bear them on her wings. Yeah. And we read the last one. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. So as the eagle, the God, or God also does, what she does is, there's a process, and I'm going to get into it, but she, when, once she has led them and taught them and, and, and brought them to a certain place, what she does is begins to stir the nest. And stirring the nest is kind of making it uncomfortable. She begins to tell them that I've taught you, I've led you, now it's time to go. Yeah, Amen. Right. And it said the same as the eagle does, so does God do with us. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to quickly tell you about the eagle, okay? So the eagle, the, the mating of an eagle is very, very important. That's the first thing. A mother eagle is very keen about Everything she does from the mate all the way to the end is to prepare her eaglets to fly. She won't choose a mate that cannot show her strength, his ability to protect, and his ability to hunt. If he can't protect, if he can't hunt, and he doesn't have strength, she will not choose him. And how she chooses him is she, she goes, she takes a twig in her mouth, she goes up and she drops it. He's over here somewhere. He has to have enough speed and agility to go down, catch the twig before it hits the ground and bring it back to her. And she continues to do this and she goes up higher and higher. And she goes up higher until the point that she knows she wants to set her nest there. So he has to be able to fly that high with that strength to that, to that height. All this is because she wants to set her nest in a place that's going to protect her babies. And so that's how she chooses her mate. So once, they, once she chooses her mate, she, they, uh, he shows her that he's strong and he has agility and he can catch the twig. And it also shows his ability to focus and to commit because he has to see this twig. You know, eagles have good eyesight, but he has to see this twig before it hits the ground. Amen? And so she's picked her mate and they're, they're, they mate and they get their eggs. And then she starts to build her nest. And she builds her nest very strategically. She uses twigs to set the foundation. She uses thorns to stabilize the twigs. And then she uses grass and her own feathers to kind of soften it for the babies. Amen? And so the babies are born. First of all, they start off, they're really 
scraggly looking. They don't really know what's going on in life. They just know they have this thing on the inside and they don't know what to do. And so they're looking to these bigger birds to say, okay, I have this pain, I have this, this, this thing on the inside, I don't really know what to do with it. And so what the mother does is she goes away, she gets food, she feeds them, and they realize, oh, my mom can satisfy this, this thing on the inside. So they soon learn that it's hunger and that their mother can feed that hunger, amen? Yeah. They go on, the mother continues to feed them, and when they get a certain weight, they get a certain maturity, now what she does is, when she goes away to get food, she stays away longer this time. She don't come right back. And so what she's doing is she's building their hunger because everything that they do up until they fly is driven by their hunger. Amen? And so she continues to build their hunger and build their hunger. She goes away longer and longer. And then when she comes back, as they, as they start to associate leaving the nest, getting food, feed and hunger. They start to make that association. When mom leaves, because she has to actually leave to go get the food, and when she comes back with the food, I feel this hunger. So they start to make those associations. They don't realize that she's teaching them all this time, but they just realize that I got a hunger, she feeding it, glory to God. Amen? So she goes, and so once they get a little more, because what happens is because no, let me not get ahead of myself. So she goes, she stays way longer, she comes back. But now what she does is she goes up high and she hovers. She just hovers. She has the food in her hands, but she hovers. Wow. And so what she's doing is first, now that they understand you have to leave the nest to get the food to satisfy the hunger, now she's provoking them to look upward. Provoking them to see her Woo. Provoking them to know that the things on your back are going to help you in this process. Oh, Amen. Wow. So she hovers with her wings spread. Come on. The eagle is the one uh, bird that can ho that hovers way more than it actually flies. Wow. Because if you didn't know, an eagle was meant to soar, yeah. not fly. Right. Right. Amen. Wow. So she hovers. And what she's doing is getting them to look up and see that, okay, the way that she's sustaining herself, she's spreading these things on her back, and she has food that I know from previous feeds my hunger. So what they try and do is now they have to actually stand up on their legs, and they have to begin to flap their wings. And so they don't realize that she's strengthening their legs, and she's helping them to strengthen their wings. But they aren't quite to the point where they can actually fly. And so this continues on for a while. She goes away, she comes back, she hovers. Now they're realizing that, hey, you know, I can, I, I can do this. You know, I look like her and I'm made like her, so I should be able to do what she do. Amen? So now what she does is when, they, when, they, when she sees them standing up pretty high and their wings, you know, getting um, widespread, she comes back to the nest that she so strategically built. And she begins to take away the grass and the feathers. Wow. She begins to expose the thorns and the wires and things like that. And so what she actually does is she tosses them out the nest, but if they come back, they get hurt. They get poked. And so what, what she's trying to do is associate returning to the nest is going to cause you some pain. Because that's not, that's not where I want you to stay. And so the eagles that don't want to endure the pain, they don't go back to the nest. But they're still not quite strong enough to take flight, so what they do is they start this thing called branching. The mother, she stops hovering, and what she does, is she'll stay going a couple days, they'll see her, and they'll be expecting food, she won't drop anything. She'll come again, they'll see her, they'll be expecting food, but now what she'll do is, let's say they're on the seventh branch, she'll drop it down to the third branch. So now they got to learn to fly short distances, to go and get their food, amen? Yeah. And so this continues on until they actually start to learn that there's a certain type of wind that I need in order to actually take flight, yeah. Yeah. amen? Yeah. And so I'm gonna stop right there because what I read was between the point where they leave the nest and actually take flight, 50% of them die. Wow. 50%. There's a 50% chance that they will die before they ever get to the sky. Wow. And so I said, if, I can't deal with them. 
If, in fact, God is the eagle and we are the eaglets, what is it that causes us to die before we ever take flight? What is it that causes us to, to favor the nest and all its thorns over the sky where I belong? Amen. And so they, they gave me four things that usually causes an eagle to um, die before they actually make it to the sky. First thing is they fall. They fall out of the nest. Uh, second is they starve. Third is they commit what, we, what they call siblicide, or the siblings kill each other. We're going to come there, man. Or, number four, um, they're poisoned. We gonna go, amen. So first, usually the uh, for falling, usually what happens is they don't quite understand the wind, and so they get overly anxious or overly eager, and they catch the wrong wind, wow. a wind that cannot sustain them, wow. because a, a eagle is very big. Yes. It, it says that once they're full grown, their wingspan is five feet. I'm five feet too. So therefore, if you turn me sideways, <laughs> that's how big they are. And so they have to understand aerodynamics. Of course they don't understand or aerodynamics, but they understand if, they, if they're actually paying attention when their mom is teaching them, they'll understand the process of catching the right wind. Because when a when a uh, when an eagle takes off, you'll never see an eagle flapping his wings. A eagle literally falls into the wind. The wind catches them and they spread their wings. That's the most energy efficient way to get up high. They let the wind do the work. That's why they love storms so much because there's so much wind and a storm can take them higher than they'll ever be able to get by themselves. Amen. And so eagles love storms. They absolutely adore them. Okay, so when you're talking about eagles or baby saints, and you're talking about leaving the nest or taking flight too soon and not understanding the the uh, the winds or the pneuma or the Holy Ghost, you get too eager and you get too anxious and you think that just because I look like them that I should be able to do what they do, but in reality you're not strong enough to sustain the wind. And even more so, you don't really understand the wind just yet. Come on. Preacher. You don't really have that relationship with the wind that you think that you have. Preacher. But you're thinking because I look like them and I kind of sound like them, then I should have the strength on the inside to do what they do. But what happened was, in the process of them feeding you, you were not paying attention and you weren't listening. You were letting your hunger overtake you. So let's just for sake of time, uh, prophets, 1 Corinthians 1, 5 and 7, Evangelist Bria, 1 Corinthians 4 and 5, um, Pastor Frankie, Luke 12, 35 through 40. Luke 12, 35 through 40. And y'all write these scriptures down. We're going to go through them, like I said, for the sake of time. A teacher is always detailed and thorough and you know, we got, but I got to give it to you because it's going to make sense at the end. Amen. So 1 Corinthians 1, 5 through 7 says what, prophets? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, mm -hmm. verse 5 through 7. Mm -hmm. That in everything you ye are enriched by him, in all utterance and in all knowledge. So in all utterance and all knowledge you are enriched or you, you, you are uh, uh, infused by him. So he infuses utterance and knowledge into you. This is all in the waiting. Amen? Amen. 
Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. So you're being confirmed in this waiting. Amen. So that ye come behind in no gift. That you lack no gift. That's good. And that's where we get into trouble. You think because you can mimic what you see the mother do, that you can actually come do on. it. Uh -huh. But he said there the gift that you that you he said that you will lack no gift. And the next word is what? Waiting. Waiting for the for the coming of our Lord Jesus. For the coming of God. So while you're waiting, he says he's enriching you with knowledge and he's enriching you with utterance and he's confirming you in Christ that you will lack no gift. Yes. So the waiting is very important because if the eagle had to understand that the waiting was strengthening them and the waiting was giving them knowledge that they should have been paying attention to, they would understand more how to actually take flight and not fall. Come on, Amen. Wow. First Corinthians four and five. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians four and five. There, go ahead. Therefore, mm -hmm. judge nothing before the time mm -hmm. until the Lord come, yes. who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness mm -hmm. and will make manifest the counsels of the heart, mm -hmm. and then shall every man have praise of God. So he said, in the waiting, I'm revealing things to you. I'm showing you the schemes of the enemy. I'm showing you where you don't quite have the revelation to understand going into the air without these things. So he said, once you wait and you get this revelation, he showed you the hearts of man that you be not naive or be not deceived. He said, once you wait, then you'll get the praise to Take flight. Amen. Wow. Amen. Amen. And then Luke 12 says what, Pastor? 30, 35. Mm -hmm. Let your loins be girded about mm -hmm. and your lights burn. Mm -hmm. yes. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord. Mm -hmm. When he will return from the wedding, mm -hmm. that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Mm -hmm. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he comes, shall find waiting. I mean, watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet, and shall come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants. Okay. So blessed are the ones that he find watching and waiting. Yes. There's a watching and a waiting, and he said, then you will have me, or then you will have success. There is a process inside the process, and the process is called waiting. Waiting is a perfecting of your gifts. It's a perfecting of your revelation. It's perfecting of your knowledge. It's perfecting of your ability to fight the enemy. Amen. 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 So waiting is very important. And waiting is the one thing that will cause you not to fall when you take flight. Because you'll have, you'll lack no gift. Amen. 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 So we have to wait. The one way to not fall to your demise when you leave the nest is you have to wait and in the waiting be watching yes. paying attention learning taking in things so that you can have a successful flight amen. amen and then we know that isaiah 40 and 31 says those that wait on the lord and now that you understand about eagle wings he said they'll mount up on wings as eagles that you understand now that it's not really about the wing but it's about the air yes. So the waiting is so that you catch the right air. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 So number two, starvation. Wow. Now starvation is a lot of times these. This is where we get into the self issues. Uh, starvation, believe it or not, for an eagle is a choice because he is refusing to fly. Uh, Amen. Amen. So, um, with 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 when you're dealing with the saints, as far as starvation goes, these tend to be the rebellious, disobedient, and or injured people, because the eagle desires to fly, 
but if he has somehow developed a fear, maybe he his mom put the meat down on the lower level and he couldn't make it, he almost failed or something, he's got some type of internal issue of why he won't take flight, or he was born injured or he did something in the nest that injured him. These are usually the ones that um, we're dealing with as far as saints, those that are injured, rebellious, and or disobedient. Amen. So these ones starve to death because they refuse to take flight. Amen. Amen. So let's turn to James um, 4 and 17. Actually, yeah, 417, then 1 John 3 and 8, Evangelist Bria, and then because you got James 417, do James 1 and 15. So, James 4 and 17, mm -hmm. therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is seen. So these rebellious, disobedient, and or injured people are actually in sin. Wow. Uh, they, they're, they're in a state of sin. And because they're in a state of sin, of course they can't take to the air. Amen. Their sin is a thing that is keeping them bound to the tree. Because first of all, disobedience is not in perfect alignment. There's no win for disobedience. There's no win for rebellion. Amen. And there's 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 no possible way for an injured person to even spread their wings. Amen. So the reason it becomes sin is because you're making a choice to be rebellious. You're making a choice to be disobedient. And quite frankly, you're making a choice to be injured. And you say, well, why? Because a lot of times if you find um, injured birds, they tend to isolate themselves. They tend to move away from everybody else. And even when somebody comes up to try and help them, they start to poke at them. Amen? And so he's still making a choice to be injured because in the body of Christ, you can be healed and delivered. Amen? You don't have to sit around injured licking your wounds. Amen. You can be healed and delivered and you can be restored to take flight. So these people are making a choice to not take flight. And he said, if you know that you're supposed to be in the air and you're not in the air, this is going to count it to you as sin. And then 1 John 3 and 8 says what? He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. So those that refuse to take flight, those that refuse to listen and obey, those that refuse to be healed and delivered, it says if you continue on in that way, you become of the devil. You enter into his courts. You become his child. Amen? Because the mother in the sky, she's going to disown you. She's going to fly right away because she knows that if I stay, it puts me at risk for dying. That's right. Wow. That's right. wow. Amen? Amen. Amen? And then James 1 and 15 says what? Mm -hmm. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. And so, therefore, you continue in your rebellion. You continue to buck against uh, authority. You continue to be disobedient. You continue to not follow instruction. You continue to not learn and take in the word and actually do the word. You continually to lick your wounds and isolate yourself. You will die. Come on. Amen. I didn't say it. But the grace, 1 John 1 and 9, says if you confess your sins, yes, that yes. he who is faithful will cleanse you of all unrighteousness. But it requires you to first acknowledge I'm in sin. Acknowledge that I'm bucking against authority. Acknowledge that I want my way over everybody else's way. That I think that my way is better. You have to acknowledge self. Yes, yes, yes. 
And you have to acknowledge that self is trying to take you out of the game. Self is trying to keep you out of the air, the place that you were designed for. Self keeps you from taking on your destiny. Self. I've identified with my wounds, now I've become my wounds. Wow. All I talk about is my wounds. Come on. Self says once it's fully grown, it will kill you. So you can choose to live or you can choose to die. Amen? Amen. So number three, we get into siblicide, or when one sibling attacks another and kills it. Amen? This is what I liken to in the church as in-house discontentment. Amen? So what happens is these are what we would label our mummers and our complainers. The ones that see no good, the ones that are mad because the mama done exposed the thorns and they can't stand the nest no more. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Staring at the nest, talking about everything that's wrong with the nest, when the issue is you're not even supposed to be in the nest no more, you're supposed to be in the air. Yeah. You done totally changed your focus. You staring at the nest and you're looking at everything you can find wrong with the nest, but you're supposed to be in the air. <laughs> okay. So what happened is these people, they become murmurers, they can become complainers, they start to tell you everything that's wrong with everything. Amen? But what God was revealing to me that these people are the people that have literally lost sight of him. They turn their eyes away from the mother that's trying to encourage them to get into the air, and they literally turn their back and they're staring at the nest. They consume themselves with getting back in the nest. They consume themselves in negativity and complaining and murmuring. Nothing in their eyes will ever be right. Come on. Come on. Nothing in their eyes will ever be right. Amen. So these ones, they 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 lost sight of God, and they're upset because the nest isn't comfortable no more, and they don't really want to change to do what they need to do to get in the air. So you can see how it's actually a you issue, not a nest issue. The nest is just doing what it was designed to do. Amen. And so what a lot of times these these people are so big and overgrown that they kind of hover or tower over the real babies. Uh -huh. So they big, overgrown cells, <laughs> staring at the nest, which they probably can't even fit in anymore, mad because they can't fit, and mad because the ones that are in there are getting all the attention, and so they start to put their mouths Come on. on them. Wow. wow. Hmm. Yeah. Come on. And what I thought was very interesting was James 4, 1 through 3. I wrote down, big overgrown bullies. Get your butt out the nest. You don't even belong here no more. Why are you still here? Why are you not growing? Come on. But oh, the nest got problems. No, you have problems. Ah. And your biggest problem is you need to grow up. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So James 4, 1 through 3. Wow. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they, come they not hence, even of your lust that war in your members. Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. He asked. Right there. So these people, actually their issue is a inner issue, an inner conflict that one, there's one part of themselves that actually want to take flight and they actually mad because they can't and they're mad because they're stuck in that spot and so actually when, when people lash out about the issues that are going on in the ministry, it's an internal conflict. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. 
It's them having an issue with, I know I should be in the air, but I feel like I can't go. But you can go. Yes. You can. Yes. So somewhere you deceived yourself if you let someone deceive you and convince you that you can't go. So now because you know you're supposed to be up there and you can't go, you mad at everybody else. Come on. You can't see good in nothing. And it says that you, 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 you go on, read that again. Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to so have. You, you, you lust after things and you still don't get it. You kill things and you still don't get it. You desire to have things and you still don't attain them. Why? Ye ask because ye ask not. And? And receive. And you ask for this. I'm on, I'm on first. Two. Two. Ye have not because ye ask not. Uh, number three. No. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, mm -hmm. that ye make a it upon your lust. So wow. it's all about your motive. Yes. What is your intention? Oh, wow. That's right. Because it says what I what I learned when I was doing the study is that um what is it um. Uh, uh, I think it's uh, I think it's Philippians four and six, but um, that it says to when you have a complaint, you 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 you're rightful to have a complaint. The problem is when you begin to spread your view to other people uh -huh. instead of taking your view to God, because it says that you can make your request known to God. Yeah. It's okay to go to God and say, Lord. I'm really happy with this, but it's not okay to go to Evangelist Bria and say, you know what? Don't this look like this to you? And then go to Sister Jeanette and say, don't this look like this to you? Because what Exodus says is that you don't sin against the leaders, you sin against God. And you know what he did to Miriam when she spoke against Moses, who in his eyes, she was speaking against him. Come on. Talk about it. So it's not that you're speaking against the leaders, you're speaking wow. against God and what he Is what happens is 
either you take on their view and you agree with them, so you, you take on their disease, or they get mad because you reject them and then they start to put their mouth on you. And they start to talk about how you're not this and you're not that, all because you won't come to they open party. Amen. Amen. So we 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 not we not we not gonna let that type of death take us out. Okay. And then number four is the poisoning. And basically, this is a turnaround. Um, you you go from being the one that is bullying to the one that is on uh, the receptive end. But the difference is. What, what's happening is no longer an in-house conflict, you've taken it out-house. And so you're letting people on the outside poison you. People that don't have the vision of the house, the ones that don't agree with the house, the ones that aren't even a part of the house, and you're allowing them to poison you with their views. You're allowing them to poison you with what they think, well, I've been in church this long and this is the way it's supposed to be. Your church is not my church. And the church that I committed to is the vision that I should be looking to. Amen. Wow. And what happens is you go out, you actually are able to leave the mess. You're big enough to leave the mess and you still die because you start to eat the wrong thing. Amen. And so first, uh, 2 Corinthians, get this real quick, 2 Corinthians 11, 3 through 4, 2 Timothy 4, 2 through 4, 2 through 4. Wow. Preach, preach. Amen. Amen. So number one, you fall. You get too eager, too anxious, you let your hunger overtake you, but you don't have understanding of the wind. You don't have a relationship with the Holy Ghost, so you fall. Number two, you choose to starve because of your disobedience and rebellion or because you want to hold on to your wounds. Number three, you turn and you, you, basically, you, you, you turn towards you. It's, it's a self issue. You're starting to see everything from self point of view and you can't see anything good. You're not even looking at your mom. She's trying to get your attention. Baby, come up here. This is where you're supposed to be. But you're so interested in self and so discontent about mama stirring up the nest and not wanting to change that you choose to starve. You choose to die. And then number four, you can't find anybody in the church to agree with you, so you find somebody on the outside to agree with you. Wow. And you allow that poise, that person to poison you, poison you against what God, because if you committed to this ministry, then this ministry has the food for you. That's right. And if you start to eat food that was not intended for you, you will die. They will poison you, cause you to leave. And it says, 2 Corinthians 11, 3 and 4, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well well bear with him. So it's basically saying, if you're going to listen to them, you may as well go and be with them. Yeah. <laughs> wow. wow. You may as well not even be here. You may as well leave the mess, try and fly on your own, and get to where you agree. Yes. Wow. Amen? And then Second uh, Timothy 4, 2-4 through 4 says what? Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke. Uh oh, wait, 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 wait. Am I saying something? Second Timothy. Four. Four. Uh huh. Two. Three. Four. Yeah. Do look up Second Timothy three. Four. I may have gotten turned around. Um. Go. For me and be lovers. Oh, that's it. That's it. Go ahead. 
Second Corinthians four two through three. Oh, Second Timothy is three sixteen through seventeen. Go ahead, evangelist. Sixteen and seventeen. All, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's two. Mm -hmm. About the ancient years. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, mm -hmm. covetous, boasters, mm -hmm. proud, mm -hmm. blasphemers, mm -hmm. disobedient to parents, mm -hmm. unthankful, mm -hmm. unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers. False accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, mm -hmm. traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Hello. Okay, I'm not going to stall. But anyway, it talks about... 2 Timothy 4, 4, 4, 4. 4, 4. 2 Timothy 4, 4. 4, 4. Okay. Mm -hmm. 4, 4. Mm -hmm. Chapter 4, verse 3. Mm -hmm. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Mm-hmm. But after their own lusts, shall they heap to themselves teachers mm -hmm. having itching ears. So basically, you go out and find somebody that says something that sounds good to you. So basically, you, you have something on the inside of you that's actually probably a spirit of disobedience or a spirit of fear. And so you want to go and find somebody that agrees with what you what, what you think should be done. Somebody that agrees with your opinion. You, your ears is itching for somebody to give you the good stuff. Amen. Like-minded yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Amen. And then 2 Timothy 3 and 16 says what? 16 and 17. Awesome. I'll be all scripture is given by the inspiration of God mm -hmm. and is profitable for doctrine, mm -hmm. for reproof, mm -hmm. for correction, mm -hmm. for instruction mm -hmm. in righteousness, mm -hmm. that the man of God may be perfect, mm -hmm. thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Mm -hmm. So therefore, judge everything that you hear by the word. It don't even have to agree with everything you hear in the house. Does it agree with the word? Amen. Don't be after doctrine that just sounds good to you. Be after doctrine that will grow you. Doctrine that will give you life. Doctrine that will provoke you to get out the nest. Amen? Amen. And so today, um, you know, as the Holy Spirit was giving this, me this message, like I said, he's doing some things and he's really um, uh, there's some things that are about to explode yes. but the problem is if you're not in the air you're going to miss it if you're not in the air your perspective is not a bird's eye view when the thing explodes you're going to get damaged because you're not supposed to be in the nest and God is saying that it's time to get out of the nest don't die in the nest. Don't die in your immaturity. Don't die in your selfishness. Don't die in your refusal to get healed and delivered. Be an eagle and soar. Catch the wind and soar because there is a wind coming. And if you don't catch it, you're not going to have the force that you need, first of all, to fly. And you're not going to have the force that you need to rise above to see what God needs you to see. Amen? Amen. So I ask you, if you're stuck in any of those places, whether it be uh, going out too soon, come back. Get the instruction. Be strengthened so that you can catch the next win. If you're choosing to be disobedient and rebellious, come back and choose life. Let go of sin and choose life. Choose to fly. Amen? And if you're listening to the wrong people, please cut them off. Sever that relationship because it will kill you. Everything that you see is not going to agree with you. But you have to be mature.
mature enough to take it to God and leave it there. And you have to be mature enough to continue to feed your hunger. Continue to look to the sky. Continue to want to be in the sky. Because if you continue to want to be in the sky, you can, you won't be concerned about what's going on with that. You want to leave that to God. Okay. 